morning. Um, uh, started a series last week. I told you last week we'd have a two-week series uh, entitled Food for Faith. Amen. Two-week series entitled Food for Faith. And so uh, this is the second week of that two-week series. I'm going to share a scripture from you, for you, again, from Hebrews 11, verses 1 through uh, 6. And like I said, we'll, we'll use that as our basis this morning, our base scripture this morning, and we'll uh, continue to walk through the gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 11, from the New King James Version of the Bible, verses 1 through 6, read this way. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it being dead still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken away, so that he did not see death and was not found, because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This is the word of the Lord. Let us all say amen. Amen and amen. amen. You all would find your way to the Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter, and we're going to begin today walking through from the 22nd verse, and our topic, this is week two of our topic food for faith. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and otherwise, God, we thank you for just allowing us to have the opportunity to come together this morning. God, we are few in number, but we thank you for those who are in the house. God, we ask that you just allow this message, God, this opportunity this morning to worship and praise you. God, we ask that you allow this to be one that will be glorifying to you. We thank you, God. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Lord, I ask that you just continue to feed us food for faith. God, allow the scripture to stand out to us and allow us to represent you all the more. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So today, we're continuing with, again, our part two of our message entitled Food for Faith. Last week, we walked through the first 21 verses of, of the gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Praise God. And so we're going to continue on with that. And I want to begin this morning. Good morning to our children as they come in. Praise God. I want to begin this morning by just sharing with you, you know, um, one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about food for faith is because of one of the things that we're struggling with in this day and age, one of the things that, that's really apparent that we're missing in this day and age is a true assemblance of faith. We don't really have a true uh, belief or true understanding, and I'm not even talking about what's going on in the world. I'm talking about the struggles that we're having in the church. And, and so what we're finding is that we are now uh, in the year 2020, we've reached this, this ripe old age in, in the church where the church has been around for many, many years. And, and, and we're continuing to press towards the mark of the pride of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Yet the church still does not find a way to resemble Christ. And it's hard for us to continue to profess to be Christians and continue to share with the world that we are Christ-like when we're not really resembling what it is that Christ actually did. And I, I share with you that, uh, that it's not the world's fault that the church looks like the church looks. It's the church's fault that the church looks like the church look and so, looks. And so uh, what we're finding is that, and, and we have a, it was oddly enough, uh, Deborah and I were coming out of the house yesterday, and there was a couple who was walking our neighborhood. And as they were walking our neighborhood, they stopped right there in our garage and began to speak to us. And they were saying that they were canvassing the neighborhood because, uh, and, and they were Caucasian, but they were, they were canvassing the neighborhood um, basically pointing out the fact that people have stopped coming to church and are trying to find people to come to church. And the reason I point out the fact that they were Caucasian is not for any racial uh, instance, but simply to help us understand that it's not a black issue, it's not a white issue, it's not a Hispanic issue, it's a church issue. People no longer are interested in coming to church because the church has stopped looking like Christ. The church has started looking more like the world and stopped looking like Christ actually is supposed to look. And it's our job to make sure, and one of the reasons that we named this place the Kingdom Center was because we wanted to make sure that as we continue to learn and continue to grow, we wanted to make sure that we understand that we're centered on the King. 
We want to make sure that our focus is always Jesus Christ. Not, not you know, the focus is never what Plenty wants to do or with any, what anybody else wants to do. But it's always making sure that in all that we do, we lift up the name of the Almighty God. And so we continue to press, but the church in general, and I'm not talking about any particular church. I'm just saying the church in general in modern day America does not look like the church is supposed to look. And so what we find is, and, and we're going to begin to go ahead and, go ahead and begin to walk through uh, the gospel according to John, beginning with the 22nd verse. What we find is that after, and last week we shared on the on all the things that were happening, we talked about how uh, how Jesus performed the miracle of the two fish and the five loaves of bread. And we talked about that last week. And, and as we came to the end of last week's scripture, we found that um, that, that the, the disciples had gotten on a boat and, and there was a storm that came and that, uh, that Jesus was sharing with them that they didn't need to be afraid and, and, that, and how he, he went across to them and, and he will, they willing to receive him on the boat and how uh, the boat uh, got to a place where it was on land. And so as we go into this week's scripture, um, we're, we're, this week's scripture begins with the next day. And it begins to says, verse 22 says, on the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was there was no boat there except that one which the disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone alone. However, other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor the disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, where did you come from? And just as I did last week, as we walk through this again, this is a teaching series. So just as I did last week, I'll begin to point out uh, points along the way. And so the question that they were asking after they figured out that Jesus had gone to the other side, they said, you know, Rabbi, when did you come here? I'm going to move a little further here. Verse 26 says, Jesus answered them and said, most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the sign. Pay careful attention to this. He says, most assuredly, I saw you, excuse me, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to, the, to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Point number one today, this is point number one today. The first point I'm going to give you today is, we struggle with our relationship with God because we naturally seek his hand instead of seeking his face. I'm going to repeat that. We naturally, excuse me, we struggle, we struggle with our relationship with God because we naturally seek his hand instead of his face. Our nature causes us to want the gifts of God without being accountable for the relationship. And so it's important that we understand. So, so oftentimes, uh, even when we go to God in conversation or when we go to God in prayer, what we do is we go to God and oftentimes what we're saying to God is, God, I don't want to deal with this anymore. God, I want. God, I need. God, will you do? Those are the ways that we approach God. Instead of really taking a moment to, to, to talk to God and really ask God what it is that he wants. Because we understand that his will is perfect. So if we understand that God has a perfect will, why do we go to him in conversation telling him about our wants and needs? Because our wants and needs are based on our experiences. And our wants and needs are based on uh, our, our uh, past. And they're, they're based on the things that we've dealt with and the things that we've gone through. Where God's wants and needs are based on his perfect will. So I want to encourage us all today as a first point to understand that we struggle with our relationship with God. Because we naturally seek his hand instead of seeking his face. And we have to get to a place where we're able to rise above our nature. And seek a relationship with God and not just the gifts. Yes, God has, you know, God is a God who has houses and land. Yes, he's a God of riches. Yes, he's a God who has everything. But understand that what, the way that we get to his everything is not by seeking his hand, but it's about being a part of his family. Amen? Amen? So if my earthly father had riches, then, I, then that riches that my earthly father or my earthly mother would have had would have been my inheritance because of my relationship with them. The same thing works in our spiritual lives. If we are going to expect, uh, if we're going to have an expectation that we are going to inherit the kingdom of God, then we have to be a part of the kingdom. We have to be a part of that family. Amen? Amen. Amen. The next verse goes on. Verse 28 begins. It says, Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work 
wisdom, excuse me, that we may work the works of God. So understand that these people are asking them, what do we have to do to be able to perform these miracles that you're allowing for other people? See, here's the thing. They're already clueless about who God really is. So they say to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you may believe in him whom he sent. The point that Jesus was saying was the works of God are not the miracles that you see with your eyes, but it's the miracles that you have in your heart. And I shared that with you all. This is not one of my points, but I shared this with you all today. The miracle, the miracle of Jesus is not just the miracle of turning water into wine and walking on water, amen, and, and for, uh, providing uh, food for 5,000 plus with two fish and five little loaves of bread. The miracle of Jesus is, is salvation. The miracle of Jesus is the fact that he defeated death. So regardless of how crazy we act in our lives, we are still able and we still have a right to the tree of life. The miracle of Jesus is to know that regardless of how stupid, and trust me, I've done some dumb things in my 49 years, but the, the miracle of Jesus is that regardless of how stupid the actions of my life has, have been, I still have a right to one day see my Savior face to face and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, and therefore I'll make you ruler of many. So Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert as it, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives you life of the world. Point number two. Here's point number two. If you came for a show, you're in the wrong place. Amen? If you came for a show, you're in the wrong place. We've got to get to the place in our spiritual lives where we can get past the surface and focus on the substance. Amen? I'm going to repeat all that again because I want to make sure we get it. If you came for a show, you're in the wrong place. We've got to get to a place in our spiritual life where we get past the surface and we focus on the substance. And one of the issues that we're having in the churches today is that people are flocking to the show. People are flocking to the place where, where there's the greatest amount of entertainment. And, and, and the sad part of it is that oftentimes people are being entertained, but they're not being fed. Amen? Remember the title of this series is Food for Faith. Amen. So, so what do you find in the modern day church? I mean, if you have the, the best musician, and no matter what his life, his or her lifestyle may be, if you have the greatest choir, amen. If you have uh, the greatest, you know, if you have uh, the greatest sense of entertainment, and, and let, let me let me just say this as a as a, as a side note here, because I want to make sure that you completely understand what I'm saying. I have no problem with. I love music. Y'all know I'm a musical person, and I love music, and I believe that music plays a vital part. Amen. And, and there are other things, uh, uh, liturgical dance and, and theater, and all those things can play a great part in the worship of God. But it cannot substitute for the word and being fed. And so oftentimes what we do is people come for the show. And, and if you don't put on a great show, people don't show up. Amen. But if you come for a show, you're in the wrong place. We've got to get to a place in our spiritual life where we can get past the surface. Remember the statement. We've got to get past the surface and focus on the substance. Amen? I can't tell you how many times I have had conversations with people where they talked about how great a time they had in church on Sunday or how great a time they had in church on Wednesday night. But when you start to ask them about what the word was actually about, they couldn't tell you. They understood what songs were sung, and they understood how many people shouted, and they understood how often they clapped, and they understood how long the praise went on. But if you ask them what the substance was, if you ask them what the, what the man of God said or the woman of God said, if you ask them what the word was about, they could not share it. They could not tell you. Most folks couldn't even tell you what the title of the sermon was. My focus here and my objective here is for each and every week when you all leave here and each and every week when you walk out, each and every week when we do uh, Bible studies, when we do our Monday night uh, inspirational calls, all those things that we do, my objective is not that you are entertained, but, to, but that you are fed. Amen? Because if you are fed, then you are able to grow properly and you're able to live properly so that, and, and here's the thing, none of us are expecting perfection. Amen? 
I'm going back to what I said earlier. You came for a show. You came to the wrong place. Amen? Because, because none of us are expecting perfection. I sit before you as the pastor of the Kingdom Center. I've been in pastoral ministry for 10 years now. I've been in ministry for uh, over 15 years now. And, and, and here's the thing. I have yet to see a place where I've even gotten close to perfection. I have flaws. Amen? And I love the fact that I believe it's Tiki Shear that talks about, it sings a song about the fact that, that regardless of her flaws, God still looks at her and he doesn't see her flaws. And it's important that we understand that God still looks at us and he sees us through the blood of Jesus. Salvation is what we're seeking. We're not seeking the glamour. We're not seeking the show. But we're focusing on the substance. Amen? So my prayer for the Kingdom Center is that what we get is not entertainment. But we get substance. Do I want us to enhance what we do musically? Yes. Do I want us to get to a place where we have to do some things liturgically? Yes. Do I want, to get, want us to get to a point where our children are learning some other forms of worship? Yes. But I want us to always understand that, that regardless of how much, uh, how much of that stuff we do, it never substitutes for the word. It should be an enhancement. Amen? I was blessed to come from a musical family, and I don't claim to be the greatest singer in the world, but the Lord blessed me with the ability to hold a note or stay on key to, to, you know, to some extent. So here's the thing. I came to understand that those things are gifts, yes, and, and talents and some, and some rewards, but all those things are for the purpose of enhancing ministry, not for replacing. So I don't want to stand before you and, and sing and, 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 and do all that and, and, and allow it to substitute what you actually should be, what you actually should be here to receive, and that's a word from the Lord that you can feed on that will help you get through your Monday and help you get through your Tuesday and help you get through your Wednesday, help you get through your Saturday. See, here's the thing. The word that we share on Sunday is not for Sunday. The word that we share on Sunday is for the purpose of trying to help you grow and get through the rest of the week. Because we understand that as soon as you hit Monday, all hell is going to break loose in your life. And as soon as you hit Tuesday, amen, everything's going to fall apart. And we know that because the enemy's going to attack. And we know that he's coming because he got a good word on Sunday. So we pray that it gives you the substance that you need. Amen? Remember we're talking about food for faith. And faith is what? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So let's get to the place where we get past the surface and we focus on the substance. Amen? Amen. Amen. So verse 34, beginning with verse 34, it reads this way. It says, Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Amen? I'm going to read that again. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Again, this is not one of my points, but this is a side note. I, I've had several conversations with a pastor friend of mine, and, and we had, in particular, we had a conversation years ago. And our topic of conversation was, why is it that people who sit in church every week don't actually believe in Christ? Amen. Amen? And here's the thing. It's important that we understand that we have to have a belief ourselves. Because here's the thing. How can I, and I think this is part of what I said last week. How can I go out and share Christ to others and be excited about it if I don't really believe in him myself? Amen? I'm not saying that you, you know, that you, you got to be, uh, you know, as deep as the ocean or as wide as the sea. What I'm saying to, to all of us is we've got to get to a place where we can develop a basic belief in Christ and use the word that we receive week after week in, the, in our own study, in our own prayer, to grow in Christ. To be able to grow and to do the things that we need to do so that we can get excited. Amen? And I, I know if we find a restaurant that I really like, my wife took me, or I took her, I guess, to uh, to this Mexican restaurant Friday night. And we, we do Mexican quite often. We like Mexican food. But we went to a different place than we normally go to. And, and it was my idea to go to the same Mexican restaurant that we usually go to. But she decided she wanted to go to one that was different. And so we went to this place, and I, I started to look through the menu, and I was going to order from the menu the same stuff that I usually get at our normal restaurant. But the, but the waiter, who was you know, a very pleasant young man, he pointed out something, and when he described it, it sounded like such a delicious dish that I had no choice but to change my mind and order what he said. Why did I order it? Because he was excited about it, and he talked about how good it was. And when I ordered it, uh, Lord knows I wanted to order another one before I could finish eating it because it was good. Amen? 
And so I share with you that we have to get to the place where we're sharing with people our excitement about what it is that we're sharing, I mean, that we're dealing with. we got to get to the place where we love Christ enough that we're willing to share him with others and be excited about it so that others can do what I did with that Mexican did. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because once you get a taste, you're going to want some more. Amen. But it's got to be a real taste. It can't be the show. It's got to be the substance. Amen? Are y'all with me? Yes. So he said, but I, but I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. And that the Father gives me, uh, that, excuse me, and that that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. My third point is rather long here. So I, I actually typed it out because I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss any part of it. But here's my third point. And I'll read this. I, I, I'll, I'll try to be slow about this because uh, I, I see a couple of you writing here. But, but here's my third point. We can only begin to grow the right way when we learn to eat the right things. Amen? Amen? Amen. And, and, and if you just, if, if that, that's the point, amen? I'm going to expound on that, but in essence, that's the point itself. We can only begin to grow the right way when we learn to eat the right things. Here's my, here's my, uh, what I share about this point. And again, I'm going to repeat it one more time. We can we only begin to grow the right way when we learn to eat the right things. Here's my point. Physically, we eat and process foods and our bodies are designed to distribute nourishment to the proper place for growth and development. If you only eat healthy food on an occasion, amen? You cannot expect your body to function properly because you eat an apple one day. Or you eat a salad. Or you ate a salad last week. That's not how the body works. Amen? Just because you ate an apple this morning. And here's the thing. You might get the effects that you needed to have for your body out of the apple. But the long-term effect doesn't take place just from eating one apple. Or just from eating a salad one day. Amen? It may have some effect. But it takes a change in your eating habits overall to really uh, allow you to get the proper benefit. Y'all get that? Okay, so we can only begin to grow the right way when we learn to eat the right things. So spiritually, we feed on the word through study and prayer. And it's still a process. And that's how I want you to understand that. It's still a process. And many people show up every once in a while and have this expectation that God is going to change and do miraculous things in their lives. And here's the thing. It's not that he can't do it. But if you go back to our base scripture, Hebrews, and we go down to the sixth, uh, sixth verse of Hebrews 11, it says he can, uh, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So it's not that God can't instantaneously make miraculous changes in your life. It's just that God doesn't want us to be spoiled children. He wants us to be a part of his family. Amen? So what he does is he, he, he wants us to continue to diligently seek him. Amen? Well, the first time you come, God's not going to automatically, he might, he might bless you, just like that apple might bless you. Some of y'all who understand what I'm saying, y'all know what I mean. That apple or that salad might bless your body and make you feel better momentarily. Amen? But if you keep eating the wrong way, your body's going to go back to doing the same thing that it was doing before. But if, but if you change your lifestyle, and then my wife's going to bring this back up later. I know she is, so y'all pray for me. But she's going to hit me with this as soon as we try to go eat dinner this afternoon. She's going to hit me with this. But if you, if you make a change in your eating habits overall, then you start to, over time, start, you start to get the proper benefits of eating the right way. Amen? Your spiritual lives work the same way. Coming to church is great. That's like eating the apple. That's like eating the salad. That's great. And, and coming, uh, coming occasionally is great. But here's the thing. He's a reward of those who diligently seek him. So, so outside of coming to church, and, and this ought to be for those, even those who come every week. Outside of coming to church, every once in a while, you got to, as the songwriter said, you got to have a little talk with Jesus. Amen? So our prayer lives have to be, you know, we, we've got to get to a place where, where we're willing to say, you know, I, I really do want to seek God more and understand that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So I encourage us all today, uh, you know, coming to church is great. If you want a real change in your life, in your life, change your eating habits. Amen? Amen. I'm almost done. And then verse 39 says, This is the will of the Father who sent me, that all, excuse me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, 
but should raise it up in the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Here's point number four. Excuse me. And this is my last point of the day. Point number four is this. The blessing is in the benediction. Amen? The blessing is in the in 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 benediction. Though we get blessed along the way, the true reward for the journey that we've taken comes at the end of the journey. And we understand that we serve a God who keeps us. Amen. Who, who blesses us all along the way. And I'm not saying you don't get blessed throughout the course of your life. What I'm saying is that the real blessing to the journey comes at the end of the journey. And, and so we have to get to a place where we understand that the blessing is in the benediction. You know, we, the, the Lord will bless us while we're here on earth. But at the end of the day, what we're really seeking is to one day be able to get to a place where we can look at our Savior face to face and again, hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And so what we want is we want to make sure that as we are continuing to, uh, to operate in our daily lives, as we continue to press towards the mark, as we continue uh, to look at ourselves spiritually, the Bible says, let a man examine himself. And so as we continue to examine ourselves and do the things uh, that we hope to do in a, for the purpose of growing in God, as we continue to do those things, it is our hope and it is our prayer that God continue to feed us, continue to give us, continue to show us. It is my hope and my prayer that you continue uh, to sit in this place or in a place where you can be fed the word of God and not just entertained. Amen? Amen. And so I want to encourage us all today. Um, continue to eat your food. Amen? Your physical food. Continue to eat your food. And I encourage you, you all pray for me because I'm trying to change my eating habits as well. I'm working on it. My wife told me last night I was doing good. I said, well, praise the Lord. And I didn't even know it, but she told me I was doing good. So we want to continue to improve our physical eating. But we want to make sure that in the midst of it all, that we improve our spiritual eating as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. You have been listening to the Kingdom Center Radio Show. That was your radio host, Pastor Clay Wilkins, and bringing the word to God's people. We pray that you were inspired by the message. Tune in next week, same time, 12 o'clock noon, Eastern Standard Time, and 11 o'clock Central Time. And we want you to know we love you with the love of the Lord, and we hope to see you back here again. Share this on your Facebook page, your Instagram, or Twitter page. And invite your family and friends to tune in to the re- the Kingdom Center Radio Show on the TMA Radio Broadcast. We pray the best of the Lord in your household. We thank God for all of you listening in today. And make it a fantastic day. God bless, and we'll see you soon.